Welcome to LS200 series, replacing the diaphragm maintenance procedure. For this procedure, we will need LS200 series instruction manual, 10 mm wrench, 30 mm wrench, 16 mm wrench, 70 mm wrench, 90 mm wrench, 24 mm wrench, 30 mm wrench, 5 mm Allen key, Torx uh, number 20, and uh, wrench extension. You will need also the uh, full rebuild kit. If the units you are working on has a slam shot, we have some additional steps. First step is stripping the slam shot by pushing the trip button on the VSX module. Then we are going to remove the slam shot by removing four bolts. Remove the slam shot box cover by backing out the four bolts with a 10 mm socket. Once the cover is removed, we will remove four hex sockets key 224 on the drawing in instruction manual using a 6 mm allen head. Once the bolts are removed, the entire slam shot assembly can be removed from the body. Pull directly out, being careful of the o-ring seals. Once free, set to the side in a safe place protecting the cam and o-rings. Next step is relieving the control spring by backing the adjusting screw with a 24 mm socket. Now you can remove the closing cap with an open wrench and remove the spring seat and the spring. Make sure not to lose the ball in the spring seat, set aside to keep safe. Now we are ready to disassemble the actuator. Use a 70 mm socket wrench to back up the cap screw out. Once the old cap screw removed, lift the spring case and set aside to keep the travel indicator and the vent protected. To remove the diaphragm, make sure the stem is pushed down so the hex feature is engaged and we can remove the lock nut with 70 mm wrench without damaging the balance diaphragm. Now remove the spring seat, diaphragm head and the main diaphragm. Below it's a spacer and o-ring. If you are only replacing the main diaphragm, you can jump ahead to reassemble portion of this video. Below the main diaphragm it's a spacer and o-ring. Ensure the o-ring stay set in the spacer to keep it safe. Check for damage and replace if needed. Okay, now remove these four bolts that keep the lower case lock on intermediary flange. Now we remove these four bolts on the intermediary flange with a 30 mm socket. Once removed, lift the actuator to remove the trim. You can do the maintenance on the flow line or you can do it on the cart. Lift the disc with one hand to ensure the hex feature is fully engaged and keep it spaced between the disc and the orifice as I'm doing here. With the other hand, use the 90 mm socket to remove the lock nut. Without spring compression, the weight of the part will disengage the hex stem and removing the lock nut could damage the trim. Once the pad o-ring and pad retainer is removed, we can remove the orifice. Use a 20 size Torx to remove the orifice from the cage, inspect for damage, and running a finger around the edge and slam shot side. Replace if needed. Remove the slam shot trim assembly and the disc from the trim. Check out the slam shot disc for damage at this time and as well and replace if needed. Next. Take out uh, 20 torques and remove the 6 bolt holding the cage to the intermediary flange. Note the alignment of the cage window with the actuator. Take a marker and mark the cage and intermediate flange to be able to line up exactly when reassembling. Tight squeeze so work the cage back and forth while pulling up. The balance diaphragm and the stem can be removed now. 
hold the stem with 60 mm wrench and 30 mm open wrench to remove the large flat nut holding the balanced diaphragm. Remove the nut and washer and remove the balanced diaphragm. When placing the balanced diaphragm, note the outside curve. It should face toward the spacer and the hex section. Next is the diaphragm plate with the grooves toward the diaphragm and the 30 mm flat lock nut. It should be assembled with Loctite and torqued to 30 newton meter. Grease the stem to lubricate the stem guide o-ring located into intermediary flange. Push the outer ring of the diaphragms into the grooves. This may take a few passes, pushing the diaphragm into place. It should not be wavy or wrinkled. Put mollycoat on o-ring on the cage and ensure it's not reach the holes area in intermediary flange at assembly. Now. We place the case over and align with previous marks and the holes line up. Before pushing the cage all the way in, pull up the stem to check the hex stem is engaging with the cage. Gently rotate the cage and check that the stem rotates with the cage as I'm doing here. If the stem rotates with the cage, push the cage down so it flush with the intermediate flange. There should be a small equal spacing all around the cage and the intermediate flange. Replace the torque screw, apply Loctite and torque in a star pattern to 3 foot pounds or 3.5 newton meter. If one side is not sitting, the diaphragm is probably in the way. Remove the cage and push the diaphragm back into place. Now we can replace the slam shot trim. Align the large spring and push down the slam shut trim. Now we replace the orifice using a number 20 Torx. Reinstall the orifice to 3 foot pounds or 3.5 newton meter. Next up the pad retainer. Check the o-ring and lubricate. Make sure to not damage on threads. Now the pad disc. Use a new lock nut from the repair kit. Hand tighten the lock nut. Lift the disc up from the orifice as we did previously to engage the hex feature with one hand. Tighten with 90 mm with other hand at 35 newton meter. If you do the maintenance on the flow line, take the trim and replace the O-ring key 25. Ensure that the channel is clean. Replace with the O-ring from the spare part kit. Slightly lubricate. And put back the trim. Mount the four screw that keep the trim in place and tighten with a 30 mm wrench to 70 foot pounds or 22 newton meter. Now check the stem alignment. The larger diameter of the stem should be slightly below the stem guide that sticks up into the actuator. This ensures the hex feature is engaged. We need to check that it has full travel by lifting the stem up. It should travel without resistance and settle back down 
to below the guide without resistance and move freely. If it doesn't move freely, go back to the cage alignment and stem and ensure that the cage, diaphragm and hex are aligned. This should be for balance diaphragm maintenance only. We can continue assembling and next is the spacer with the o-ring. Make sure to not damage on the threads. Notice the pin on the spacer, this will connect with the diaphragm head. Align the bolt pattern of the main diaphragm with the actuator before placing the diaphragm plate on top. Once aligned, place the diaphragm plate and match up with the pin from the spacer. Recheck the bolt pattern of the diaphragm and the actuator. Next is spring seat and the new lock nut from the repair kit. With the stem pushed down, the hex is engaged and the lock nut can be torqued to 26 foot pounds or 35 newton meter. Align the spring case bolt with the diaphragm and place on top and insert all the cap screw. Tighten the cap screw and nuts to 18 foot pounds or 22 newton meter with a 70 millimeter socket or wrench. Replace the spring in the spring case and place the spring seat on top with the ball bearing on top. Grease the adjusting screw and the tip to reduce friction. Attach the closing cap and drive the adjusting screw in. If you have a slam shot, we will now reattach to the side. Ensure the cam is in lower position, 6 o'clock. Align the slam shot box with the original orientation and carefully reattach the box to the body. There should be no gaps between the body and box. Once lined up, drive the four bolts to 8 foot pounds or 10 Nm and replace the box cover with the four bolts. Rearm the slam shot with the lever provided by turning it counterclockwise and ensure that it rotates and rearm without difficulty. You have now rebuilt the LS200. For more information, contact your local Emerson sales partner.